Someone just open up that envelope. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 45th episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 200th episode overall titled A Mystery to Me. We start this episode at a creepy mansion where we find Bulk and Skull walking around dressed as a chef and a detective. They then look at a painting on the wall and suddenly its eyes go away, showing human eyes. Then an axe falls from a suit of armor and Skull doesn't even notice it. Bulk and Skull enter a dining room and we see our ranger teens. Adam looks like he's going on a safari. Kat is dressed as an elegant woman. Tommy is a cowboy. This is for a whodunit party for the retired detectives fund because God forbid these kids ever do anything just because it seems like fun. Then we see the others. Jason is a golden clad mobster. Rocky looks like a fancy butler. Tanya is a flapper girl. They all wonder who the culprit is going to be and Jason explains that it could literally be anyone. Tanya then immediately blames Rocky and she says that the butler is always the first one and Rocky doesn't want to be the butler. Then Stone shows up with a mock French accent talking about how the culprit is in this very room. He has sealed the name of the culprit in the envelope in front of him. He then says that the culprit is... And then the power goes off and Stone is gone and they're curious as to why Skull screamed. <laughs> Jason says that this is the beginning of the mystery. Kat explains that one of them is the one who made Stone disappear. Apparently. Then Tanya says that everyone should look for Skull and Adam leaves with two people. Kat is also trying to figure out who has the strongest motive to get rid of Stone. Also the painting now shows that Archerina's eyes are behind the painting. Archerina hates Catherine because she gives Pink a bad name and she wants to knock Cat down a peg or two. And Gasket actually thinks that Cat is kind of cool for a human, which makes Archerina instantly plan to separate Cat and kill her. Then Adam is walking around and he finds a room that's glowing a bright white light. He enters it, going into a stone room. The door closes behind him and there's no way out. He's just there now. Tanya then says that she's a little worried about Adam and she leaves to go find him. Meanwhile, the others are looking for other people. Kat then asks Bulk and Skull where they were the night in question, and Kat is super serious about this, and then she insinuates that Rocky could be the culprit. Again, Rocky complains about being the damn butler. Tanya is walking around, and she sees a glowing room that Adam went into. She follows suit, going in there as well. She walks in, joining Adam. They're both legitimately just stuck in there. I mean, that's weird. Wouldn't you kind of be weirded out by that? Then, they all hear a weird noise, and Tommy leaves to go find the others. Now, he's walking down the hallway to a southern twang background music. He finds the same glowing room, and of course, he goes in too, finding Adam and Tanya. Apparently, this is where all the victims are kept until the mystery is solved. They wonder who it could be, and Tanya immediately blames Rocky, <laughs> which is really funny at this point. Then Rocky walks in, and then they realize they all just have to sit there and wait now. Then Kat says that it could be Jason or Bulk and Skull. Skull then points the finger back at her, saying it might be her because it might be the one that you least expect. Then Jason says he's leaving to check on the others, and Skull asks him not to leave them alone with Kat. Jason tells him to chill. It's a game. Someone should tell Kat that. He leaves and then they try to eat something and it's a freaking snake on a skull apparently. Jason then sees the glowing room but Bulk and Skull come running up grabbing him and bringing him back into another room. Which is where the real victims are actually being kept. Then Kat is alone yelling for everyone to come out because apparently she's the killer. Then Archerina shows up in front of her challenging her to a battle. Archerina insinuates that she has kidnapped the others in her dungeon. Kat accepts her challenge and she must go meet Archerina in the Forest of Eternal Light. Archerina leaves and Kat tries to call Tommy, but there's no response. Kat tells Alpha and Zoran what's going on and they tell her that she has to fight Archerina while they try to get to the others. It's morphin' time! Catherine then appears in the Forest of Eternal Light, and yeah, this is just an excuse for them to say that they're fighting in daylight, apparently. She and Archerina fight. In the dungeon, Tommy tries to contact Zordon, but nothing. They then try to teleport out, but nothing is working. Tanya immediately knows that this is one of Gasket's traps, and they wonder where Kat and Jason are at. Meanwhile, Kat is getting her ass kicked. Kat loses, and she says that since she fought her, she needs to just let her friends go anyways. Then Gasket just brings out a new monster, the Nucklefire. Kat resolves that this has to be the only way to save the others, and she gets ready to fight, but then she just gets fired at. She calls out for Alpha and Zordon. Meanwhile, Alpha says that they can't get in touch with the others. Zordon suggests they send down Oric, who I legitimately forgot about until right now. Oric then shows up and he saves Kat from all three monsters, but then he starts getting fired at, falling back onto the ground. Kat makes sure he's okay, and Kat tries to tell him that she needs to finish this, and Oric says, No, I was sent to protect you. And then Gasket just zaps him again. In the power chamber, Alpha and Zordon are watching this, and they realize that Oric is really sucking too. Alpha has found a frequency that might be able to reach the dungeon, and he tries it, and we see the others are walking through some tunnels. They readjust their communicators to get to a new frequency, and they get teleported out to the power chamber. They see what's going on with Kat and Oric. Tommy says they can't wait on Jason since they still have to get in touch with him because, of course. They go and help Kat. It's morphin' time! The rangers show up and use a Zeo shield around Oric, protecting him. 
What the hell was that? Whatever, they use a Zeo spinning power punch and we see everyone do it except for Rocky for some reason, and then they hit the monster down. Then Ormus and Clake show up making him giant. The Rangers call their Super Zeo Zords, forming the Super Zeo Megazord right away. They do a little bit of a battle with giant knuckle fire before they just started cutting his weapons in half with their dual sabers. Then Tommy calls out the warrior wheel, and yeah, they bullet blowing up the monster. Actually, just kidding, knuckle fire is hanging on somehow. Then Cat starts talking about how they need pure Midas or help. Then Oric just grows giant and he kills Nucklefire. Okay. Then Gasket and Archerina talk about how Cat just made a dangerous enemy. Were they not enemies before? Back at the mansion, Jason asks if the others got lost and they say, no, we'll tell you later. Then Cat remembers the letter and she pulls it out looking at it. The name of the culprit is... The lights go off. Then Detective Stone shows up. Yeah, it's him somehow. He tells Bulk and Skull they need to know that it's always the one that you least expect. What? The end. This episode has like glimmers of hope, but it really starts to just fall apart at the end. I will say I was happy to see they actually tried something weird and new with the show, with the whole murder mystery party thing. However, they keep making Kat a damn damsel in distress. I mean, she's challenged to a battle one-on-one -on -one with Archerina, and what happens? Freaking Auric shows up and saves her. I mean, it's just ridiculous and it's annoying because Kimberly at least got to defeat some monsters solo. And I'm sure you could say, well, that's what happened in the Japanese footage. But when they've been so unafraid to film so much original footage lately, there's no reason why they couldn't have manipulated the situation into Kat doing it all on her own. I mean, it's just a shame. Other than that, yeah, the plot makes absolutely no sense, but I like seeing Kat and Archerina fight one-on-one, -on -one, so I guess that's something for the episode. Also, what was the point of making Jason a full-time ranger again if you can't even use him? Kind of funny at this point. You could have just had him be Trey this entire time, who can only come back in case of an emergency, and it'd change nothing. Well, next time, we're gonna get into an even weirder episode, but until then, may the power protect you.